What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. We're going to the All-Star Game, and we'll have a lot of great interviews for you, so be sure to hit subscribe. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. First, I'm going to start with Tanner Bybee, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up only one run. He had this painted fastball, as well as this hammer curveball. He faced Jordan Lyles, who had five Ks in five innings, giving up one run, and this curveball, changeup, and backup sweeper that isn't quite in the zone, but we'll take it. Sean Armstrong had five Ks in three innings, giving up no runs, and had this fastball cutter and slider. He faced Christopher Sanchez, who had two Ks in six innings, giving up only one run, and had this slider. All-star Michael Lorenzen had four Ks in five scoreless innings, giving up only three hits, and had this slider for a sword, as well as his changeup. Mackenzie Gore only had one K in one of the third innings, giving up no runs, and had this paintish fastball. His outing was shortened due to rain. He faced Brandon Bird Dog Williamson, who had four Ks in three scoreless innings, giving up only one hit, and had this fastball and slider. Cutter Crawford had three Ks in four innings, giving up three runs, and had this fastball and bend-the-knee slider. He faced Nate Evaldi, who had three Ks in five and a third innings. His command was a little shaky with four walks, and he gave up four runs and had this fastball. Cookie Carrasco had four Ks in six innings, giving up no runs, and had this slider for a sword. He faced Ryan Nelson, who got absolutely shelled, giving up seven runs in three innings, only had one K on this nasty changeup. Yusei Kikuchi had four Ks in five innings, giving up four runs and had this fastball and nasty curveball. He faced Jesse Schultens, who went four innings and only had one K on this painted slider. Marcus Stroman had six Ks in five innings, gave up four runs, and had this sinker for a sword, as well as this fastball, and struck the K stance after it. And I did this overlay of his two-seamer and slider, and you can see how those pitches work together, and why that combo has been really good for Stroman this year. Stroman faced Freddie Peralta, who was really good with 10 strikeouts in five and a third innings, giving up three runs. His fastball was up to 99 miles an hour, and he also had these six sliders. I thought Peralta's fastball was about as good as I've ever seen it. Julio Arias had eight Ks in six innings, giving up two runs, and had these change-ups and breaking ball. He faced off against Johan Oviedo, who had six Ks in six and two-thirds innings, but gave up five earned runs and had this fastball, as well as this slider, for a sword. Ronel Blanco had 9 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 3 earned runs on only 3 hits. I thought his stuff looked really good, with a mix of fastballs, sliders, and wicked changeup. He battled George Kirby, who put in a workmanlike effort with 3 Ks in 6 and 2 thirds innings, giving up only 1 run. Kirby really relied on his fastballs for strikeouts, including this one that was a little high, but still called a strike. The king of command doesn't need help with the strike zone. Kyle Bradish had five Ks in six scoreless innings and had these fastballs, curveballs, and sliders. And he faced Luis Severino, who had three Ks in two and two-thirds innings, but gave up seven runs. A really shaky outing, but I'll be positive, and he did have this fastball and slider. Jack Flaherty had five Ks in six and two-thirds innings, giving up no runs, and relied on his mix of fastballs and knuckle curves. And here's an overlay of his fastball and knuckle curve. And look how well that knuckle curve tracks with that fastball and then absolutely dives. You can see why Flaherty was so effective. He faced Ayuri Perez, who had seven Ks in six innings, giving up only one run, and honestly probably had the filthiest stuff of any pitcher yesterday. A great bounce back from his outing against the Braves. He relied on his fastball and slider and got a couple of swords on his slider. And here are overlays that show why that fastball and slider are a very good pairing. His slider doesn't have ridiculous movement, but it tunnels really well with his fastball. And that fastball velo, along with the tunneling, makes a hitter have to decide really early whether to swing. In the best pitching matchup of the day, Jose Barrios battled Lance Lynn. Barrios had six Ks and seven scoreless innings, giving up only one hit. He had this painted two-seamer, as well as this high two-seamer, and these change-ups. And he battled yesterday's most dominant starting pitcher, Lance Lynn. Lynn had 11 Ks in seven scoreless innings, giving up only one hit. The big man was dominant with his mix of cutters, sliders, two-seamers, and four-seam fastballs. And was just blowing Blue Jays hitters away. 
And amazingly, he did this without really dropping any F-bombs after strikeouts. A family-friendly ass-kicking by Lance Lynn. I must admit I was a little disappointed. I kind of like him dropping F-bombs. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Andres Munoz painted with flames. Reynaldo Lopez had this fastball and slider combo. Chasen Shreve picked up three Ks with his fastball and splitters. Jose Alvarado had these filthy cutters. Again, I don't know how anybody ever hits that pitch. Kevin Kelly had these six sweepers. And here's an overlay of his sweeper with his fastball. And you can see how far outside that sweeper starts and then ends up on the other side of that fastball. That's how much movement Kelly's sweeper has. Jordan Romano had this slider and fastball. Kendall Graveman had these sliders. Bruce Stark Gratterall had this ridiculous, absolutely painted 99 mile an hour two seamer that ran 17 inches back to the plate. And I overlaid that two seamer with his slider. And you can see why you would take that two seamer. That slider just barely caught the zone. And that two seamer starts out outside the slider. So you're thinking, he's trying to get me to fish on another slider, but it ends up being a two-seamer that's back to the plate. Jordan Hicks had a 98-mile-an-hour two-seamer and an 87-mile-an-hour sweeper, and I overlaid those just to accentuate their filthy movement. Matt Brash had this insane slider for a sword. Look at that thing. And here's an overlay of that slider with a 99-mile-an-hour heater, and you can see how far apart those things end up. That's how much ground you have to cover when you're facing Matt Brash. But my filthiest reliever yesterday was Trevor Richards. Richards' changeup was absolutely ridiculous. Look at the crazy movement on these things. He ended up picking up four Ks in two innings, and it's no wonder. He was throwing freaking UFOs at people. Here's a slow-mo of his release of one of his changeups, and this changeup had 2,831 RPMs basically right up there with the airbender. In fact, Richard's changeup has a higher whiff rate than the airbender this year at 47.1% versus only 42% for Williams. And his spin rate is fairly close to Williams' spin rate. He averages 2,585 RPMs, Williams 2,643. The biggest difference between the airbender and Richard's changeup is really the movement, especially the horizontal movement. Williams' airbender gets nearly 21 inches of horizontal break, while Richards gets 16 inches of horizontal break on his changeup. But it's really starting to approach airbender-like filth, and hitters are only hitting 126 against his changeup this year. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. May everything come to you as easy as this foul ball came to this fan. A ninja blessing to start your day. What is up, everybody? I've got some great news for you today. Today is a 30% Pitching Ninja Profit Boost token day at FanDuel. You get a 30% Pitching Ninja Profit Boost on any MLB straight bet. And because today is Friday, it is also a daily strikeout leader special day at FanDuel. And you can use that Profit Boost token for that bet. I would use my Profit Boost token to take Hunter Brown to be the daily strikeout leader. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. First, I'll start with Bailey Ober for 6Ks or more. Then I'll take Zach Gallon for 7Ks or more and top it off with Hunter Brown for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?